Hey guys, Lenny Reed down about these products. So today, surprise, I have a lunchbox. It's my favorite lunchbox. I've had it for a very long time. But what's cool about this lunchbox is today it's not holding food. Today, I brought samples of injection nozzles in. And the reason for that is because buddy Corey has a fancy little tool. Corey, McKay Manufacturing, Spokane, Washington. Yep. You do a lot of design, drawings, really smart people things to help me out pretty often. Mm -hmm. And one of those things that we have to do is make sure that metallurgically we're using the right parts. We're making the right parts out of the right steels. I was kind of blown away the first time I ever saw that thing. So why don't you tell my people what the heck that thing is and what it does? This thing is a XRF gun or X-ray fluorescence. So it is going to shoot electrons out of material that they're going to bounce back and it's going to tell you the composition of that material in percentages. So percentages of alloys, percentages of anything that these parts can be made out of and it's going to tell me. So if I've got a part that's uh, uh, name any material that has to be heat treated after. 17.4. So if the 17.4 isn't heat treated properly, it's not going to duty cycle correctly, correct? Correct. So this is going to tell us what the material is, and then we can check with the hardness tester to see if it was actually properly heat treated, correct? Correct. So you made none of these parts. You have no dog in this fight. Correct. I want to know if these parts, no matter who they were manufactured by, if they're what they claim they were initially, and then we can check them for hardness later with just a Rockwell, just a simple Rockwell test, and we can see if the if the hardening process was actually done correctly. Correct. So let's just get to it. Okay. I'm kind of I'm I'm excited to see where some of these things come from. you we got seven samples hmm. and uh, we've got some data none of it that I really understand to be honest but good news is I know how the parts act I know how well they last now with this data we can kind of start a, a, a track record and uh, start shooting to help uh, make better shopping decisions when we're having things made yep uh, so now next step we're gonna go do a Rockwell test just to show everybody out there what a Rockwell test kind of looks like, because I already know what most of these things will test at. Okay. But I'd like to do that on camera just so everybody understands what that, I mean, people here, it's a Rockwell 60, it's a Rockwell 30. Mm -hmm. But without seeing the test, I think it'd probably be good education for everybody. Mm -hmm. So do you mind helping me out there? Yeah, we can go do that. Sweet. All right, guys, catch you in a few minutes.
Okay, so Corey, I can't thank you enough for taking, giving us the time, uh, letting us show our customers what it is that we're up to and what it is that we're doing. Um, what I just learned was that somewhere in that 51-ish range is something that my experience, I've seen some issues with, and it's not every single day, but yet an OEM nozzle was a 54, and some of the parts that we're having made today are all 54s, and some of the parts that I've been using for a very long time are even as high as 57. Mm -hmm. And I can honestly say that the OEM stuff, zero problems. The new stuff that we've been, you know, haven't manufactured for us, zero problems so far. And the stuff that was 57, uh, I've been using that for a very long time. I'm pleasantly surprised that it's that hard. And you were just telling me about your aerospace customers. So explain to us what that's about, like how they like that. So a lot of aerospace customers are worried about strength. When you're in an airplane, you don't want it to fail. So they're worried about strength. They give you a minimum hardness that you have to hit. So talk about material, heat treating, and it's got to hit that after all of those processes. Okay. So if they require, say, a 51 or a 54, if they get a 56 out of it, they're okay with that? They're okay with that. They're okay if it's a 60? Yep. They just don't want it to be below spec? Not any softer, yep. And is that basically because the only thing consistent in this life is gravity and an airplane will fall? I don't know, whatever. <laughs> so, so having something too hard, other than machining it, which obviously a bunch of these parts get most of the machine work done pre-heat treat mm -hmm. and then post-heat treat, I doubt there's very much done because Correct. as hard as they are, uh, that would be very difficult to machine. Correct. Something at 57 is going to be pretty hard on tools. Correct. Very hard. And we had stuff as soft as a 51. That was excellent information. Like today was really educational. I'm glad that we were able to shoot so many pieces all at once. I know that you've got other stuff to do and I don't want to burn out too much of your time, but man, I really, really appreciate sure. it. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'll get you those tires that I owe you. Sweet. <laughs> Thanks guys. Take care. Linear Eat Dynamite Diesel.